Alright man, welcome to Anime Showdown. If you're returning, then welcome back. It's been a hot minute. If you're brand new, if you're absolutely brand new, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip right now. Just press play. Don't worry about trying to get good at the game. Really just get some friends, press play, and just fuck around. Have those silly and stupid moments. Uh, if you are like a returning player, I'm not gonna lie, this is not gonna do much for you. This might be a refresher, but to be honest, you're probably better off just playing the game and figuring out everything again. Uh, the biggest thing though is obviously going to training, that's where you're going to learn pretty much everything. Stop trying to learn it in pubs and don't go into fucking rank, you'll die. Alright y'all, so once you're in, just pick any character. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter who you go right now, because I'm just going to go over like the main mechanics that every character has, like universal things, right? Uh, biggest thing is the M1s, your mouse ones or punches, they look like this. Normal people are going to call them M1s. You got five M1s in a string, the first four are normal, the last one is a finisher. So it's gonna look like this. This is a very basic M1 combo. I'm going a stronger one. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. That last hit is a finisher. There is always a variance to finishers. I'm gonna show you them all too. And there's two other variants to not two other. There's one other variant to a normal M1. I'll get to that as well. All right. You can see the last hit of that finisher does a little like white ring around them. That means they're iframes. You can't hit them. Don't even try. Don't waste your time. Okay. I'm gonna show you one more time. All right, see that white ring? Yeah, that means that they're invincible. You don't see over there, there's like a white dummy, white glowing dummy, right here. Iframes, if you see a purple thing around them, that's hyper armor, red, super armor. I'll get to what they mean too, but I'm just letting you know, this game like visually tells you and it's actually a really good feature they add. Uh, so with M1s, there's different variants. I'm gonna show you the other variant called an aerial m1 uh, let me kill off this dummy first though all right uh so there's the aerial m1s and they also have their own finishers uh, to toggle your aerial m1s so i'm gonna explain this the best way i can without making it sound overly complicated uh you toggle through ground m1 or aerial m1 uh to go into an aerial m1 you just press space okay it'll just look like this Okay, so if you press space in between any of your normal M1s, remember that's your four M1s, the fifth one is always a finisher. The fifth M1, the last M1 is always a finisher. Okay, but uh, let's actually go over what the aerials do. So again, if you press space, mid M1, you go into the air. This uh, action of bringing them up into the air is called an up tilt. If you ever hear that, that's what it means. It counts as an M1, so don't like get your numbers confused don't get your time to confuse it is an m1 so uh the next m1 after that it's probably gonna be a finisher so let me show you so if i do one two three four nice good game. one okay wow <laughs> okay all right one two three four this next m1 is a finisher okay i do not get an extra m1 if i up till on the fourth m1 i'm sorry if i press space on the fourth m1 that is an up tilt. The next one is always going to be a finisher. Just get the timing down, okay? Uh, let me show you the finishers if you're up in the air. So like I said, if you're holding space, then you're going to do an aerial M1. If you hold space, all right, basically I'm just going to sum it up real quick. If you're holding space, they're going to be in the air. If you let go of space, your opponent's going to be on the ground. That's all it is, okay? Your finishers are the same crap, right? If you hold space when you're doing your M1s, you're gonna do a sidekick. It's gonna look. It's gonna look like this. Okay. It looks very similar to the normal. Okay, this one's gonna die. It looks very similar to this. All right, but if you pay close attention, there's a white ring when you do that one. That iframe ring. This guy don't have it when you do a sidekick. This game is amazing. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let me show. Okay. Up and then sidekick. Okay, that guy did not have it. So that means you can combo with them off of that. Usually with beams. If you are in the air and you let go of space, then you do a down slam. You bring them to the ground. Let me show you the other finisher. So this is a down slam. Wow. All right. And the same thing. Uh, it sometimes combo stands, it sometimes doesn't. I'm going to be honest, it's jank when it comes to that. It's not jank for the game, it's kind of just Roblox jank at that point. Uh, but there is a better way to combo stun with that, and I'll show you that later. And there is the last finisher I haven't showed just yet. 
I'm gonna get one of these guys. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna show you the last type of finisher. It's definitely the coolest one because it's like this will actually shock you when I show you what it really does. So. Uh, there is an up fling, right? This sends your opponent up into the air, and you do it basically when you do a ground in one, and the last final hit, the finisher, is an aerial finisher. So basically just hold space with your fifth and one. Yeah, it's going to look like this. There, they go up in the air. Uh, normally, if you come from a game like ABA, you know this is pretty useless because you just mainly use it for techs and all that. Uh, but this game actually has a really cool mechanic with it, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, I'm just going to recap all the finishers one more time, just so you know. So, so you can have the normal ground finisher here. Okay, it knocks away. It's honestly not that good. I don't recommend doing it over the other ones. Like, if you have the opportunity to do everything else, just do it. I would not stick with this one, because the normal M1 finisher does 7 damage, and I think, let's see, up flame does how much? 6. <laughs> like, it's so, it, it's honestly pick your poison, right? Uh, the normal M1 is like, I guess if you want them to get off of you, the up fling is like one damage off. So, to be honest, there, I would not do the base M1, it's not worth it. Uh, then you also have the aerial M1s. So you have the down slam, which is, if you let go of spacebar, they are going to be on the ground with your finisher. It's very simply put. If you hold space when you're in the air, they're going to stay in the air with you. I'll show you the side kick now too. Okay. All right, and that is amazing. Wow. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why this game is like. No, it, it usually doesn't, but I really don't know why it's like this. Okay. All right there. And that's the side kick, right? Uh, those are all the finishers you gotta really know. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah. Uh, big big thing. If you are coming from ABA, this is a very huge thing actually. If you are coming from ABA, uh, you are pretty familiar with down tilts, which is pretty much if you're in the air and you let go of space before a finisher, you're going to go down with them and do a down tilt. It is a very, 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 very annoying mechanic. Uh, like an awfully thought out mechanic. This game doesn't have that. I'm going to let go of space as soon as I up tilt them, and you're going to see that I'm still doing M1s into the air. If you feel like the M1s feel a little bit off, that's probably why. Okay, so I'm going to show you right here. Alright, that was an awful example. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let go of space. I'm going to try to get my up tilt as soon as I can. And I'm going to let go of space as soon as I can too. Alright, I'm letting go of space. And just like that, I was still doing aerial M1s without down tilting. Now, down tilting, again, if you've played ABA, you know what that is. Alright, if you don't know what that is, honestly, don't worry about it. Basically, if you're in the air and you let go of space, they're not going to come back to the ground until you do a finisher. You're just going to stay up in the air with them, continue to do aerial M1s. Uh, basically, uh, this, here's a better way to put it. You don't have to hold space to do aerial M1s. You can just press it to toggle between in the air or on the ground. Okay, that's all it is. Okay. That, that. So, I like, I highly recommend for you to get very comfortable with m1s because they are the main way you're gonna fight anything in the game and the next thing i'm gonna show you does branch off into those that's how you do the combos as well just get very familiar like take some time to learn everything be able to consistently do it yourself oh yeah i forgot to show you the big thing all right i'm gonna show you the big thing all right so uh the thing with uplinks that i want to show right so normally uplinks are the the last hit Basically, you just you do an aerial or you hold spacebar on the fifth and one. All right. Uh, you can actually combo in with that. Normally, in ABA, you, you can't. But in this game, you can. So, uh, to combo in with it, you have to double jump and catch them. I'm going to show you exactly how it looks like. Honestly, just try, dude. You'll get it. You'll get it. Like, you just have to try. Um, if you do too early, you're not going to get the double jump back. If you do too late, they're going to get out of stun. I'm going to show you how it looks like if you do too early. Right. If I do too early, I don't get the double jump. If I do too late, they get, they get out of my stun. That. Normally, they're going to block it. I'm telling you now, normally, they're going to block it. Alright, like, that's just. It's not stun for that long. Um, so, yeah. You can do that. That is combo stun. It's a very, actually a very good combo stun, and honestly something I do um, over down slams. So, 
get very comfortable with every finisher especially your m1s because you're gonna be going up into the air a lot you're gonna have to get used to the timing uh don't click your m1s that is like that's also a big thing i forgot to mention don't click your m1s uh you're a monster if you actually play the game clicking m1s you can hold your m1 button to the m1s you'll just have to get the timing down that's really it all right all right hopefully you've played a bit with the m1s um the best thing I can tell you for that is just go into training and just fuck around with them. You're not going to learn too much if you just watch the video. You got to actually let it click in your head uh, mess around with the M1s. The next thing I want to mention is these two bars at the very top. Uh, top one is your awakening bar. If you've played the game, I really hope you did. You should know that if you press G uh, when this thing is full, you awaken, you get new moves, full health. It's honestly different for every character. That's kind of their gimmick. Uh, oh, the second bar at the bottom here is more important. This is your stamina bar. Uh, this pretty much just tells you if you can or can't use a move. So, uh, right now, I have about half. I could have used, like, any move, but if I drain it all the way down. Alright, you're gonna see that I can't use a move. So, how do you actually bring the stamina back up? How do you charge it, regen, whatever? Uh, there's two ways that you can do it in base. So, the first way is if you hold C. This is the main way you hold C and you charge it. Alright, you're put into an animation. You can't move during it. Uh, there's like no end lag so don't worry about doing it mid fight to be honest i think the strat is like if you guys have some dead space and charge or you can also just kind of spam it a little bit in the fights that works too just bring it back down yeah. uh and okay and the second way and also a really good way so you don't just have to be charging is you actually get them off of the m1s yeah you only get them off of M1s. You don't get it off the moves. That'd be fucking dumb. You get like a good chunk from M1s. I mean, stamina is stamina. I don't have much else to say about it. Just like keep an eye out on it. And if you hear the noise that you can't do a move, <laughs> stop fucking pressing the move. Uh, like if you're like mid combo and you're doing it, then just send one them. Right, you'll get a little bit of a bet. So you can do a move. But yeah. Uh, next thing though is your M2s or your heavies. If you've played Deep Oaken, this is your critical, like your R. And if you played YBA, this is the exact same thing. It's your M2. So this move, uh, you double click your right mouse button. I call it M2. You call it heavy, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, but it takes up a little bit of your stamina, just so you know. It guard breaks. It's honestly, like, it's the exact same move as this right here. All right, the last hit of my fifth M1 is the exact same move, but it has... Uh, it uses up stamina and has a wind up to it same crap okay and there's a second variant of the heavy so i just showed you the ground variant and there is an air variant so if you go up in the air and do it you're gonna do a slam like this it combo starts or extends whatever you want to call it uh it's a very strong move so basically you have a combo start in your base like that's really good again you just do it in the air you press into it you can also do it in a down slam i don't recommend it like that because i'll show you why you shouldn't be spamming it uh if someone does spam you and i'll get to it as well later um you can perfect block it parry whatever you want to call it see right here Oof. oh 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 he's right here okay right, he's right here oh yeah so if you parry, you parry it and you're like stunned there really good so uh, if someone is doing it and it's like extremely noticeable if they are doing it just perfect block it it's not too hard to counter i just pay attention so i think that's it just double check okay uh and if you're in training and it's not working for you because it's bugged out a couple times for me like this guy is bugged out it's not doing it you probably have to do it on a different dummy or just better get reset all right all right so now that you know a little bit more about your m1s and especially like that's your bread and butter to connecting combos you got to learn the main thing about your kit which is your moves right uh let me just tell you every character is individualized enough uh i can kind of give you a general guide like a rule of thumb as to how each move works they're gonna fall into one of these five categories some of them can even fall into more than one okay so you're gonna have the first one being poke moves they are essentially just ranged they're there to just hit they're, they're just gonna hit an opponent that's it they're not gonna do anything other than that in case like my four here it's not gonna combo extend it is just there to do some type of range 
like it's good for like interrupting people and just getting free damage out uh so the other type of move is a combo extender so if i go ahead and just combo here and my three is a combo extender i'm just gonna tell you so if i do a combo here and i use my three all right afterwards i can extend my combo out that's all that is okay just keep an eye out on your combo extenders because they are what you want to make sure you keep you don't want to be just sending out combo extenders because what if you do in a combo and you don't have them that's probably like the worst time you could ever have that happen to you uh the other thing you can have is a combo starter so a combo starter is just a combo extender but they are usually really good for starting off a combo instead of doing an m1 to start you can start off with this move so like my two here you can start off with combo right it's really easy to land it too and it combo extends and then i missed that okay cool uh, the last type, like for offensive type moves, is a combo finisher. It is exactly what it sounds like. It starts, not starts, it finishes off your combo. So I'm going to show you my one here. Okay. I can use it mid combo. Yeah, it doesn't have like end lag, but it finishes off the combo. I can't extend off of it. Uh, just make sure you know which moves do those things. Make sure you know that you're not using a combo finisher when you just start the combo <laughs> don't do that okay if you have combo extenders use combo extenders uh, and obviously the last type of category you can go into and this is like a special case is utility this can be like counters blocks all right but once you got at least somewhat of a grasp of what you can and can't combo with now you gotta actually start making your own combos right you know how to m1 you know what moves combo now learn how to actually put those two together uh, I'm going to be honest, what's the best way to do it is just go into training and just start messing around with dummies. I can't tell you any better advice than just to try it yourself and just see what works and what doesn't, right? I'm going to show you what I'll be doing sometimes. I'll go in here and I'll be like, all right, I know this will land. And I'm going to be like, all right, can I do this? Is that true? No, it's not. They announced him. It is not true. Okay. So you got to see like if I can do this move afterwards, it's an honestly just trial and error. And you'll actually learn the character a lot by doing that too. Uh, that's like the best tip I can give you. Just you've learned the M1s. Now I just incorporate moves into it and see what works. And also don't do the same combos all the time. Like there's so much combo variety in this game. You're not going to have all the same moves at the same time. It don't be like, don't be like an ABA player, man. Just mix it up a little bit. Okay. Um, there's a lot of ways you can combo. Just play around with it, man. Okay. Like I'll literally be doing the same thing as you right now. So that that would be something i do right that'd be a good example of how i would just mess around uh i also highly 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 recommend is to use evasive dummies i'll get to evasives right because i said i'm going to cover the uh defensive later uh, but evasive dummies they just basically track when they get their evasive right it's really good to know when they can get out of your combo because if you can bait out an evasive and then you do your combo afterwards, you have like this amount of time before they get out, right? I always just go with these two. I prefer these if anything. All right, they're right there. They could evasive out of that. All right, so when it comes to offense, I mean, that's really all I gotta say for now. Like I really could keep going further with it, but this is like absolutely just a beginner's guide. I don't want to get it too complicated this game just release for everyone now we're gonna move on to the defense stuff and like all the utilities and things you gotta know uh biggest thing and this is always your best friend is your block so you have two keys you can use to block either or you have your e key or your f key uh it's personal preference which one you use you're gonna see when you block you have a purple meter at the top uh it does not drain when you hold it okay it's not like a you can only block for a certain amount of time it is a block bar where if you take damage and you go it depletes then you get guard broken okay uh certain moves deplete that bar instantly some moves deplete it faster than others right uh, this game's like tailored to not every hit is like universally the same amount of block like, like block meter depletion all right like something like a barrage like like this for example right um it guard breaks at the end right uh but that normally will not guard break because it does very like low Block chip damage. I don't even know if there's a word for it, but I'll try to show you off here. Let's see this. All right. All right. So there's also block dummies. 
if you want to see what guard breaks or not, you should also try that out, right? You can see right here, right? Normally, that's like the equivalent to a punch. What I just did right there with that one trident drill was the equivalent to a punch. Obviously, that last hit guard breaks. So uh, just keep in mind, you should not be afraid to block uh, moves that do a lot of punch. Like it's this game has a hidden value when it comes to how much damage is taken through block, right? Uh, so if you have your block bar depleted, like I said, you'll get block broken and uh, certain moves guard break instantly. They break that meter instantly. So like this heavy dummy I'm going to go to. Nice. Alright, he'll guard break me instantly. And I, I can't move at all for like a good second. Uh, that's why I said, if someone's holding block like crazy on you, you can either just deplete their bar or you can guard break them. It is really easy. Uh, the second thing, and let me get, actually get it here. So the second defensive utility you have is your evasives. Uh, they're bound to one key, which is your R key. You're going to see right here at the very bottom of your screen. It's going to be like a little white bar looking thing. Uh, when that is filled up, you have an evasive, okay? They also are the same as these dummies here, right? If I hit them, this white bar is an evasive. You gain evasive by getting damage uh, taken, right? You don't deal damage to get evasive, I don't believe so. It's only damage being done to you. So you can honestly test out a combo to see if they'll be able to evade out of it or not. It's a very good strat to see if your combo will be true enough, right? Uh, but basically, if you evade, let me show you what that even looks like. You see right there it evades all right so i'm gonna show you what i mean uh by like you gotta make sure you time your uh evasives right basically if you get like knocked back if you're put into a knockback animation and you use an, an evasive you waste it it's a straight waste let me show you what i mean yeah. right there right i already have iframes i use an evasive that is such a common mistake people do Stop using your evasive when you get knocked back. You, you gotta understand, man. If you see those white frames, especially around your character, you're fine, dude. You don't gotta worry about anything. You're not gonna hit, okay? Uh, evasives do give you eye frames, by the way. I wanna just point that out. They do. Right. Let, me, let me double check this just to be sure. Uh, they give you eye frames entirely, right? Yep, they give you eye frames. So you can use it to just cancel out like a big move. But the biggest thing, don't go using it when you're getting knocked back, right? It's a very common mistake people make. Dude, your evasive is so strong because you completely negate people's combos and you can actually strike back. Uh, also, like, don't... If you're doing evasive, don't instantly go for them. A lot of people don't realize that you do not have, like, M1 priority. So you're, most of the time, they're just gonna re-combo and if they land a combo off you, you don't have evasive, dude. You're actually dead. You just lost right there. So try, yeah, try not to evasive and then try to fight right back. At least like position yourself in a better spot, right? Yeah. And uh, the third thing I want to mention, and this, you know, you could say this is offensive. It really is offensive, but because uh, it's it's more of a newer thing, a lot of people don't even know it exists, right? Uh, so there's this thing called an assault dash. Um, normally you press Q to dash. If you didn't find that out by now, you press Q to dash. If you press X on a person and uh to be honest it's not here that you'll actually see it you'll see it in game uh there's gonna be a, an orange little indicator see where my birdland mochi is right here there's gonna be like an orange looking circle right above it uh that pretty much just tells you that you can assault dash like it's you're good if you press x it will basically like track you onto them and get you to close the distance it's a gap closer that every character has uh, if you played Jump Force, it's like the rush move from Jump Force. I'm going to show you what it is. Right. It doesn't do damage. <laughs> it don't do damage. It is purely just a gap closer. Uh, your next util, and I mean, arguably, I shouldn't be telling you this because it's, as a beginner, it won't really matter, but you should know it because it will happen to you. Uh, it's parrying. If you're familiar with perfect blocking or pairing yeah this should not come as a surprise there's pairing in the game okay I'll show you right here. nice i'm gonna show you right here there we go honestly you could just practice on this guy it's it has a very like generous timing not that generous but okay uh it's self-explanatory if you parry they get stunned uh they're moving you canceled you stun 
you'd be surprised how many things get buried in this game. Uh, this little thing I showed you right here is variable. I want to see if I can do it on this guy. See right there. Yep, that's variable. So, uh, M1s are not. Alright, so just the last thing I want to bring up are your armors or like the state of moves. Uh, basically, there's three of them. You got super, hyper, and iframes. I'm going to call it white, purple, red. Uh, red will reduce any incoming damage by 50%, and you can't get knocked out of your move. You have no stun. Okay. Purple is you take no damage, you can't get knocked out of your move. An iframe is you can't take damage and you don't get stunned. It's honestly hyper and iframes are the same. They don't make a difference. Except for that, uh, usually hyper is a lot shorter than iframes. It's mainly it. Uh, I think that's really it for like defensive utility. I don't think there's anything else you're going to miss out on. Yeah. Uh, just like I said, just keep an eye out on your block and make sure you don't use your evasives at the wrong time uh, like a huge tip i have for using evasives though obviously don't use it like an idiot when you're getting knocked back you waste your evasives if you do that okay uh, but the biggest thing is try to use your evasive if your opponent is going to be in a long move like a good example is a beam or like a barrage if you use an evasive during then you will have so much time to set yourself in a position where they get take a combo essentially especially beams beams are like free okay uh just keep that in mind yeah but that's really it i uh, don't have anything else to honestly tell you right now it's this it's really a beginner's guide right it's for the people who just started out uh just enjoy, enjoy it i'm really excited the game is back so have fun with it i really hope this game like continues to keep doing what it's doing i really hope it doesn't have the same situation as before uh, there's a bunch of characters now i think we have like 20 or so so just enjoy it man uh, i'm really excited to play it again but yeah uh, i'll see y'all later hopefully and happy holidays to y'all